Amy Winehouse in the grip of her addictions and could provide no answers about whether it is possible to be both clean and creative the recovering intoxication and its aftermath by Leslie Jameson does the world need another addiction memoir the answer depends on the memoir of course it's a question Leslie Jameson addresses head-on at the start of the recovering intoxication and its aftermath the worry that she will simply retread a well-worn path However, with a panache that will become characteristic over the course of the book, Jameson turns the question on its head. A story doesn't have to be unique to be worthwhile. Instead, she argues, it's the universality of the addiction narrative that should win it followers, the fact that it tells a common tale. The recovering is, then, yet another tale of addiction and recovery but one graced by self-awareness and luminous writing. It also possesses a trait necessary in any good memoir, which is the writer's willingness to reveal herself and her family and friends for the story, a sacrifice worth making only if it is done well enough. Coming from a pressure cooker background, Jameson felt the need to excel from a young age. Her mother was a nutritionist and public health researcher, her frequent flyer father an economist who had many affairs as he worked to alleviate global disease burden her italics. Affection was distant. She writes of her godly brothers and their powerful reserve. Growing up she sought love and approval and achievement. Jameson's experiences glitter with privilege. She stew at Harvard and traveled in Nicaragua, were assisted by her fluent Spanish. But self-abasement threads through them. At Harvard, she was anorexic and cut herself. Compulsion might find its roots in reprimand, she writes. From a sense of being scolded by the world or found wanting by it. As the story proceeds, she excavates the causes of her addiction and describes the whirlwind of her downward spiral. She turns over stories of other addicted writers and artists, looking for lessons. What she really wants is evidence that the myth isnt true, that artists don't have to be addicts to succeed. Is it possible to give up alcohol and still live an interesting life? She asks can a recovered alcoholic write well the answer she wants isnt easy to find as so many burned out, Jean Rhys, David Foster Wallace and Amy Winehouse all in relapse of the grips of their malady. But Raymond Carver forged a second life, living soberly overlooking the Pacific, fishing in the ocean and in strong clear rivers. Jameson is delighted to find a writer whose early brilliance existed despite his addiction and not because of it. The later part of the book explores Jameson's recovery, and takes readers through her meetings at Alcoholics Anonymous. She introduces the characters she met there and probes their stories. She is obsessed with the thought that recovery will hold less interest than her story of descent. It's not true. She draws the changes in her life and relationship with her boyfriend, Dave, in exquisite detail, but her accounts of the lives of her AA colleagues lack the vividness of her own, and the second section does move more slowly than the first. The recovering is a study not just of alcoholism, depression and renewal but also an extraordinarily self-conscious look at how literature addresses those experiences. It's better than Olivia Lang's The Trip to Echo Spring, which treated the same subject but with less persistence and self-revelation. Jameson's brilliance is most evident when she puts her finger on the complexity of human emotion. Even as she hopes to put it behind her, she gently evokes her nostalgia for drinking, a balcony with Dave, the crisp tang and sugared nectar of Sayaketra, a local white, the wine pliny called Luna, with the big moon over us and the waves breaking below, the faith where get married, the church music from another hill. Sunday Indo Living